Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are going to be installing ESXi on the Raspberry Pi. So let's get started. Now I am super excited that this is actually available for ARM and also on the Raspberry Pi. But let's be honest, the Raspberry Pi is not a great emulation or virtual machine server. But in reality, I am more excited that this is on an educational standpoint for me at least. And I'll get to the explanation in one second. But keep in mind that ARM servers are coming. You know, they're getting more and more cores, 64 cores, 128 cores. And eventually we are going to need something like this to actually provide a virtual machine environment. Now, if you guys didn't know what ESXi is, it's a type one hypervisor that allows you to run virtual machine inside a server. So if you install this on a Raspberry Pi, technically you should be able to actually run multiple VMs, right? And if you guys ever tried to install ESXi on consumer grade products like this, yeah, it's not gonna work very well because they made it a point that they're not gonna support consumer grade products like, like real tech network cards or stuff like that. So ever since 5.5 and up, it was actually really hard to get EXXI properly installed on a computer like this. And if you guys done it, you know what I mean. It's it, You have to do some patching and this just to get it to 5.5, then upgrade it to 6.0. Yeah, it's a mess. But now that you are actually able to install it onto on a Raspberry Pi and expand from that, you can actually use this as a learning experience. The, the big excitement for me on this is I'm gonna now be able to learn how to do uh, vMotion, vSANS, and a bunch of other stuff that I was never able to do before. Now I've used VMware and ESXi in a work environment, so I know my way around it. I know how to build VMs, I know what data stores are, I know how to allocate certain things. But if you were to ask me to like move a live system to another system, that's not something I would do, so I've never gained that experience. And with this, I'm actually gonna be allowed to. Anyway, let me show you how it looks right now on my setup. So. Here we have um, ESXi put into my Pi and you can see it's Raspberry Pi Foundation. It's got four cores. I'm using the eight gigabyte board, so it's got 7.9 gigabytes. And you could see the status right here. I actually am using 5.7 gig, well I have 5.7 gigahertz free and using about 300 megahertz. And here's something like I was saying, the learning experience. If you guys didn't know, ESXi actually counts by total amount of uh, megahertz. So if you got 1.5 gigahertz, on a Raspberry Pi per core, that's 600 gigahertz. That's six gigahertz total. And then if you're using 325 megahertz, you got 5.7 gigahertz free. So that's how they calculate stuff. Those are the little things I'm talking about uh, uh, as far as learning in ESXi environment. Uh, I am using the latest firmware from uh, 1.2 from uh, PTFT. P I forgot the name, but yeah, they're the one that actually made this entire thing possible. And kudos to them because seriously, without their ability to make this UEFI bootable on the Raspberry Pi, this would never have happened. So yeah, I am using the latest firmware. Uh, they have a lot of cool stuff added to the 1.2, so I would check out what's added to that, especially like fan control, yeah. Anyway, moving down, I have a couple of virtual machines set up and I have Ubuntu, Debian, and I tried to install Windows 10, which is not working. Like I'm using the same firmware that you would use to install Windows 10 normally, which is the 1.2 uh, version, but it won't boot like it would just go like this and all of a sudden it'll stop I don't know what the problem is I haven't looked into it it might be something stupid but I don't know yet now moving down I have a one to server install here so I got like a little terminal command and I gotta be honest it's actually pretty responsive for running a VM inside a Raspberry Pi so if I do sudo apt update let me see apt update it runs pretty normal like I don't have any problems with it. it runs pretty smooth as well like if i was to h top that works right away and uh let me close this out and if i was in debian and i installed uh what is it 10.6 right now debian works pretty well as well so i have a normal desktop i actually themed it a little just to play around and if i was to click on anything like look how responsive it is and i just gave it one core and two gigs of ram and look, it opens right away. And if I was to show you like say, uh, you know what, uh, task manager. If I was to pop open the task manager, this opens right away as well. It's very responsive. Even moving the screens like this, I have no problems. So I'm really surprised. Either way, it's, it's not perfect for VM emulation as far as the Raspberry Pi, but allows you to play around enough just to, just to learn. And then I also have my data store where I am using the same hard drive that I have installed it in. And I'm going to give you a little trick on how to do that. 
but yeah, I have my data store here and I have some storage so I could put my VMs in there and stuff like that. But ultimately, the whole ESXi works perfectly. I had no issues going in and the installation was really easy. Um, it's very similar to what you would do normally when you install it on a server. So I'm gonna jump right into that now. All right, a couple of things you do need on this whole entire installation and I do need a memory card to boot up the EFFI. It doesn't matter what size, you could use four gigabyte, one gigabyte, whatever it is. Just have enough room so you can store the UEFI boot uh, files and that's about it. Then you need a USB for uh, the installer ISO and then uh, SSD or larger USB just so you could install the uh, operating system and everything else. To begin, um, their instructions are horrendous. Like if you were to go into, I'm gonna leave a link down in the description to where you could get uh, ESXi on ARM, but if you were to download their Raspberry Pi um, instructions, I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's not super clear. They have all tons of things going on and they're telling you certain things and how to transfer files and don't do this and do that and stuff like that. Uh, I'm gonna show you basically the same way they told it, but in English, I guess. So I will also leave a link down in the description below to uh, these two links, which is the same thing, the official Raspberry Pi firmware where you could get from GitHub or and the UEFI where you could get from PFTF, you know, that I was explaining before. So I'm going to leave a link to these two as well, but on the document, they have the same link going to the same place. Now, I already pre-downloaded everything, so I don't have to go through the whole mess of downloading it while you guys are be watching this. So I have everything located into an EXX ARM folder and I'm going to open up a terminal here and we're going to start. Well, actually, I could just extract everything. Extract here and then I'm going to extract here and that is it. Now I'm going to pop in my uh, SD card into my computer. So I have my little drive plugged into the computer and I'm using GNOME. So I have less little, you could use Gparted, but I'm just using GNOME Disk Manager and GNOME Disk Manager works pretty well. So I'm just going to carry on with that but what we're going to do is uh, dismount everything that's on the drives so I could format this into FAT32 and remove this I'm going to delete that and in Windows you could just use your know, regular formatter to format it back to FAT32 so once I'm done with this I have a ton of free space I'm going to hit the plus allow free space next and I'm just going to name this boot whatever it is then I'm going to turn this into for use of all system FAT and I'm gonna erase. Actually, no, it's gonna take longer, so I'm just gonna let that go through. It's gonna create the partition, and there we have it, FAT32, it's not mounted. It's, it's exactly what I need it to be. So now I can mount the system, and it's gonna be called boot, and I have 31 gigs free, which is the smallest memory card I have available right now, and I'm done. I could close this out, pop into my boot, and it's gonna be empty. On here, the two files that I've extracted, I'm going to head over to firmware, go into boot, and this is your boot firmware that you would see. I'm going to select all and then hit control and not move over the kernel images. These are the things I don't need, these four files, and just drag it over. So it's going to copy that over to the memory card. All right, and we are done with that. And next, we're going to head back into the other firmware, which is the Raspberry Pi UEFI firmware, pop into that, and copy everything from here over to that same partition and you're gonna just merge everything or overwrite everything whatever you want to do and I'm just gonna replace everything that needs to be replaced apply this for the next selection replace now one thing that is required once you're done transferring all the files over to the boot folder uh, you go into the config where is it config.txt we're gonna edit this and on the bottom, we are actually going to do GPU underscore mem equals 16. And save, because we don't need that much video memory. You want to try to save as much memory as you can, so 16 megabytes of memory, video memory is perfectly fine. All right, now that we are done, we are done setting up the UEFI SD card. Next up is to set up the USB so we could install everything. So I'm going to eject this just so I don't accidentally wipe it out and pull the SD card out. Next, I'm going to take my USB key, pop that into the computer, and uh, I'm going to use Etcher. You could use it for Windows or Linux, you know, the Etcher program. I actually have this pre-downloaded, and uh, I am just going to open this up. Run. In here, we're going to find the file to flash. 
So file to flash and I have it in ESXi ARM and it is this VM Visor install 7.0 Arch 64 ISO. So it's going to say missing partition tables, perfectly fine. That's supposed to come up. And then you find the um, um, USB that you have, which is my 16 gigabyte one right here. I'm going to select and just hit flash. Give this a few minutes. It's only a small file, 135 megabytes. It'll transfer super quick and you are done. You, you Once this is done, you have your USB for UFI boot that you will put, plug into your Raspberry Pi and then your uh, USB installer. All right. Let's move on to installing this on the Raspberry Pi. So the first time booting into this, you want to get into the settings of the UEFI and fix a couple of things. So in Device Manager, you want to head over to, uh, let me see, Raspberry Pi Configurations. And I believe it's Advanced Configurations. And you see how it says Limit RAM to 3 gigabytes. You have to disable that. This way it allows you to use all the RAM, 4 gigs, 8 gigs. Once you are done with this, uh, you will hit Save. And... I'm going to reset the machine just to make sure that it's taking an effect. So now that I booted up again, I'm popping back into the configurations and I'm going to change into a boot manager to make sure it's going to boot up from my USB. So I'm going to go into boot manager and make sure it's going to boot from this one. No, not this one. Now the SanDisk is the installer that I'm going to put this in. Uh, the UDisk is the USB that we just flashed to make the installer. So I'm going to boot right into this and the first thing you do is hit shift O. Now you can see it says run weasel and CD-ROM boot. You're going to need to add another option in here called auto capital partition OS data capital size like that. You see how I have the capital P, capital OS, capital D, capital size equals 8192. Okay, what this does is actually because we are only going to have one install media or one storage device, we don't want to have the installer take up the entirety of that, which means we won't be able to create a data store to store our operating systems or our, our VMs. So we are only slicing up eight gigabytes just for the operating system with this little command. And then the rest of the free space, whatever you got, will be dedicated for your data store. If you don't put this command in, you're going to have to install another USB or another SD, SSD just so you could turn that into a data store which is inconvenient and since this is really for testing this is perfectly fine i wouldn't do this for a production environment but yeah once you start up with that the rest is basically very straightforward to install okay now that it's done booting up we're going to hit enter to continue hit f1 to continue that except the ula and it's going to scan for available devices and it should pick up your USB SD card or USB whatever device. So my cruiser blade, this is the install media, which I won't do anything with, but this is the actual other hard drive that I have or other USB SD card that I have. So I'm going to hit this, hit OK to install, uh, US as default. Here's your password that you want to install. And yeah, F1 to install. Give it a few seconds. Actually, it doesn't take that long to install. You're only transferring really, what, 200 megabytes of space. Once this is done installing and it boots up, it will actually just give you the IP that it took and all the information so you can log into it for the first time and basically set up everything. All right, everything is successful. All I have to do is hit enter to reboot and we're going to boot into the environment. All right, guys, uh, this is the first boot and it's successful. I mean, to a point because I do not have a network cable connected to it so it doesn't give me a DHCP address but otherwise uh, yeah everything is working and whatever IP address it gives you that's the IP address you would put into your browser and you could start controlling it and navigating around like we did earlier in the beginning of this video if you guys have any questions about this hit it down in the comments below um, I did actually think of a brand new idea that we could do during this whole thing which is create your own cluster computing if you want to learn how to mesh multiple operating systems together like you do with you know cluster computing but yeah interesting stuff that you could try out anyway if you guys are new to this channel consider subscribing also if you hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out and as the same my nerd cave hack till it hurts